The offensive meta is oppressive right now, and the Catria Ball is a very useful tool to combat the amazing bulk that we're seeing in modern armors. They're fairly simple to build, my units are right over here, and it got me into the top 100 this week. What gets expensive is when we start talking about fodder. Yeah, that's a lot. But as we walk through this, I'm hoping you can pinpoint exactly what you need, what you don't need, and also get a glimpse in how to create a defense using benchmarks. Stick around to the end and you can see an absolutely crazy Henry clear. So defenses can be really complicated, but I found the best way to design them is through benchmarking. Just boil everything down to four matchups, Yuri, Brave Erica, Ascendant Fjorm, and Brave Hector. When you're building this defense and swapping out your own units, just make sure they win those matchups. These are the units that you'll see every week on a regular basis. Now, we'll go over each match individually, but these units are the best at what they do. The fact that there are two armors tells you where the meta is heavily leaning right now. Tanks. Now, before we go further, we need to talk about the biggest tool at your disposal, and that's your friends list. <laughs> <laughs> this particular defense borrows heavily from a player named Adara. She's absolutely amazing and just recently got rank one as a free to play player. So thank you Adara for talking through face stuff with me and also congratulations. Now let's get to the requirements for a Catria ball. To run one, you need a couple of very specific units. Obviously the first is Catria. <laughs> she provides triangle attack and orders She's amazing. Next, you need your premier damage dealer. And for me, this is Duochrom. He is an absolute monster, but really you're looking for someone who can take out Ascendant Fjorm. Bonus points if they can also run Vantage to take care of those folks who rely heavily on the Bolt Tower because Vantage Krom is a beast. From there, we have our player phase defense in the form of near save and far save units. Player phase is probably the biggest weakness of this defense because it can put out just so much damage. And it's best to think of Catria balls like armor balls, but with a player phase. You're letting the opponent move freely about the map until they provoke you. Then you're obliterating them, <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> but the last is an isolation proof dancer. I'm talking about light season, so you have to beat Milla. I'd say a threshold is around 56 defense, but you want as much as possible. Now there are lots of other considerations, but these are the main ones. Keep in mind that these units want to stay close to each other to utilize triangle attack. That means threat range overlap is incredibly important and calves are not the best in this lineup because of that. It also means the bolt tower is the greatest weakness of this defense. That's right, your catapult is very important again. There is one more thing you need for this defense to work, and that's dumb luck. <laughs> Listen, some seasons aren't going to go your way, and that bolt tower is gonna be perfectly placed to take out your entire team. When it happens, it's time to brush it off and live the fight another day. Anyway, I wish you guys the best, and remember, this is a game that you're playing for fun. <laughs> Sometimes you win matches that you have no business winning. And this is one of those matches. <laughs> this is OG Micaiah and she one shots Arden and laughs at him. I spent this entire replay wondering how in the world I won this. The problem is they didn't take enough units off the board. So triangle attack is still in effect. Still, Yoon doubling Julia seemed like a non-starter. This is Julia bonus season. But then she gets danced, and she has Moonbow proc <laughs> and Yoon! <laughs> this was my favorite replay of the week, and it shows you how powerful Triangle Attack really is. Yoon had no business destroying Julia, but she did. Take that in for a second. This also really points out the little details that make defenses work. This is the little extra input that I put into Yoon and it pushed me over the top in that match. This is gonna be part of the fine tuning that you put in as you continue to make your defense. But summoners, I would love to hear about some of your ridiculous luck, good or bad, tell me about it in the comments. Let's dive into some stuff that you can actually plan for. And first up, it's the hit and run master himself, 
Yuri. I'm including the matchups I did with my units just so you can compare expectation versus reality here because that's the hardest part about creating a defense, predicting what the player will do. And past turn two, it's near impossible. Now, I've done a ton of sims with tons and tons of units, and Arden does an amazing job of keeping Yuri from doing his Yuri things. This is a good time to talk about Hardy Fighter. Keep in mind, Hardy Fighter doesn't work on turn one, and it's not supposed to. It's supposed to help out for the units that are stalling for the Bolt Tower to take effect, or need to get into a better position. The fact that Arden can tank Yuri without Hardy Fighter being active is what makes him so magical. So he's useful on turn one, and he's even more useful past that. Keep in mind though, when we talk about luxury items, Hardy Fighter is one of those. It will help you during maybe one or two matches through the season, but it is premium fodder on exactly one unit. So if you don't have it, you can still win matches. But it's time to switch to what a real team looks like. And Uller bonus season was doing me no favors this week, but you can see that they planned to take Arden out and it failed miserably. They needed to reassess and get Uller into position, and that means I'm already winning on the turn front. Arden is no match for bonus season Uller though. Like, this is painful. But you can't just have a savior that's good against everything. The best you can do is pick your matchups, and it's why I talk about just those four units. Pick the most common. The good news here is they make a mistake. They leave too many units on the board, and you guys notice that Yoon missed that kill by two freaking points. Come on, Yoon. And Hector, do at least one damage to Ash. Come on. But then we get Change Fate going, and Krom is hard to defend against. And you can see this is an important part of the defense. You need some sort of X factor, some sort of unpredictability. It's yet another reason why Krom is so good. After losing a unit, they bail, and frankly, I'm not sure they could have cleaned this up without losing another one. So it's a win for us, and we'll take that. Now, I don't have a brave Erica, so I can't show you a video of me going up against this team with my own units. But trust me when I say I have had friends go against this defense using theirs, and Erica is a monster. Hector does handle her, but it's important to note that he doesn't handle the second most common Gale Forcer, which is Summer Sita. Now is probably a good time to point out Note's build. The six extra spur defense and res are putting in work, but these are the kinds of replays you love to see. This is exactly how I simmed this. You don't often get wins that are this clean, so when they come, <laughs> we celebrate! Things change so fast, don't they? Krom is the Ascendant Fjorm counter all by himself. It's one of the main reasons he's such a valuable unit. The armor effectiveness also helps him against any other armor that isn't named Ithun or Hector. But we'll look at how I drew this up first. You can see that this is just no contest. Krom hits through Ice Mirror for almost 120 damage. It's to the point that no Fjorm actually challenged me straight up. Now, I did have a Valentine's Robin come to visit. Most of the time I expect some variance between The Sims, my personal runs, and what actually happens. This is one of those rare occasions where all three lined up perfectly. <laughs> now, I wonder how many Ascendant Fjorms we're going to see. I guess really it just means you have to bring another team that doesn't have Ascendant Fjorm in it. But, wow, Krom, Krom good. <laughs> Every defense has their problem units, and I feel like Brave Hector is just always mine. So let's take a look at my test run. There are actually two paths to defeating him. Duo Krom can beat this one with triangle attack, but keep in mind Hector only has one merge here. Higher merges will have much better results. Yoon can win with wind sweep and triangle attack and a dance, <laughs> which is what she's designed for, but that leads to another point. Make sure that your investment in your mythics is the last piece you add on. They just seem to age so quickly. Think about Triandra, who's a dancer, so she's supposed to do well long term. I know a lot of people who just won't use her because of Mila. 
just be careful how many resources you dump into your defense mythics. Let's look at how it actually went, and this is versus a plus nine vector, so we should get a better view. What really wins this match for me is the deceptive reach that both Note and Krom provide. It's just tough to predict where everyone will go. You can see Air gets taken out right away. It's also worth noting that without triangle attack, Brave Hector kind of laughs at this Krom. I know this is a win, but I was hoping for a more decisive victory versus this unit since I designed Yoon around killing him. Overall, it's a victory, but I still feel like the defense has room for improvement when it comes to Brave Hector. Also, I'm really worried Ascendant Ethune is going to rock me. So, I don't know, maybe it's e -tree time? <laughs> the point is, you're always going to have projects like this, and out of the benchmark units, this is definitely my weakest matchup. All right, summoners, here it is, as promised. I've walked you through the different successes of this defense, but I hope you're also seeing how narrow the margins are. It's part of the fun of defense making. The game is definitely rigged heavily towards the offense. You can't just plan for everything because as soon as you think you have, Henry shows up. <laughs> Hats off to this player, but it! two hours after this loss, I got a victory that would have given me a perfect season. But how can you be mad at this? Look at that Henry. He's tanking my entire team. Duo Krom who? But the biggest point here is defenses are fun as long as you're not looking for perfection. Perfection is really difficult. Most of the time, just aim for best rewards. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe just aim for improving every week, and that's probably a good way to go. Let's talk about some takeaways. Don't get bogged down trying to counter every single unit. Once in a while, a Henry is going to come along and just rock you, and that's okay. You can't defeat everyone, and if you're winning 90% of your matches, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> Uh, next, every defense archetype has its strengths and weaknesses. An obvious weakness to this is Elamine and False Start. That means Anima Season is going to take more creativity and possibly harder hitting units, but it doesn't mean this is unusable. I'm using one in Anima Season right now and it's actually doing pretty well. Lastly, I've said it before on this channel, but originality is overrated. <laughs> take some of these ideas that other people are using make them your own. Enjoy. Uh, I hope you guys liked this episode. Uh, my wife let me use her studio, which is why I've got this crazy ring light thing. I don't know. It, it's, it's supposed to make me look prettier. <laughs> so I, you can imagine how I really look. But uh, anyway, uh, I hope you guys are doing well. Schedule an appointment with your fail just real soon and take care.